Hello again, everyone. Uh, my name is Pastor Edmund Castro, and I'm the pastor of the Dutton Street Mission. Uh, and I've just got a lot, again, uh, today I'd like to share a few words that I've written down and a few scriptures. And then at the end, I'd like to share a, a short song with y'all. Uh, and anyway, today's subject that I'd like to talk about is how that Jesus did not come into this world to condemn the world, but instead... The, God sent him into this world to save the world. Uh, and anyway, the word condemnation, it means this. It means, to, it means the expression of a very strong disapproval. It also means criticism or it means damnation. Uh, it means punishment to punish or to sentence someone to a certain punishment. Um, and I just wrote down a few thoughts. Have you ever thought about the fact that if anyone ever had the right to condemn people, it would have been God? But yet God was the one that sent Jesus, the Son of God, to die, sent Jesus to this world, his Son, to die on the cross for our sins. So, see, he didn't send Jesus to condemn us, but instead he provided a way for us to be saved from condemnation, to be saved from sin, to be saved from hell. Uh, like I said, he would have been the one that would have had the right to condemn us, but he didn't. Instead, he sent Jesus to die on a cross for our sins so that we could be saved from that condemnation and from that sin. Uh, you know, a lot of people have the wrong opinion or the wrong idea about God. You know, they think of God as being angry and hard to please. They think of God as, as someone who is watching them and just waiting for them, to make, for them to make a mistake so that he can punish them. But that's not the way God is. They think of God as, as someone who's, you know, just uh, waiting for the, waiting to punish them and waiting for them to make a mistake so that he can just send a bolt of lightning to strike them down. But that's not the God of the Bible. You know, again, God is is not waiting to punish you. God's not waiting to punish anyone. Uh, always remember that the Lord is waiting with open arms. And today you might feel lost and you might feel like there's no hope for you. You might feel like you've done too many bad things for God to love you. You might feel condemned within yourself, but I want you to know something. God loves you. So that's very untrue. God loves you. He wants to, you to be saved, and he, he wants you to be saved again from sin and from that condemnation. Uh, I wrote down that you may feel condemned and that God is angry with you, but to be condemned is actually to choose condemnation by self instead of life by Jesus. In John chapter 3, verse 18, it says, He that believeth on him, talking about Jesus, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So again, the way that we are the only way that we're going to be con that we are we are condemned is when we reject Jesus Christ. But when we receive receive Him as our Lord and Savior, then He He saves our soul. So actually, without Christ in our life, without believing on Him and trusting Him for our salvation, we're condemned already because we have not. If you have if we have not yet believed, we are condemned already. So today, get rid of that condemnation and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior again before it's too late. And I wrote this down. Uh, again, God is not waiting to punish anyone, but he's, he's not waiting to judge anyone. He's not waiting to condemn anyone. Instead, God is waiting to receive you with mercy. 
He's waiting to receive you with love and with open arms. He's waiting to save you from your sins, to forgive you of your sins. He's waiting to save your soul. Again, God's not waiting to punish you. He's not waiting to uh, condemn you, to hurt you in any way, but he's waiting to help you. He's waiting to save you. And if you believe on him today, if you ask him to come into your heart and life to forgive you of your sins, if you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And that's what God's waiting for. God wants you to be saved more than you want yourself to be saved today if you're not saved. Uh, and I wrote, that is why he sent Jesus to die on the cross. If God had wanted everyone, if God had wanted everyone to be punished and everyone to be condemned, he would have never sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. You see, here's the main verse in John chapter 3, verse 17. It says, For God sent not his Son into the world, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You know, he, the Bible says he died for the sins of the world. He doesn't want any to perish, but all to come to repentance, the Word of God says. You see, Jesus, did, again, did not come to condemn the world. You know, the world was condemned already. You know, for many people, it seems that the name of Jesus brings thoughts of judgment and thoughts of condemnation, but that's not what his name should bring. You know, maybe the reason that the name of Jesus brings thoughts of judgment and condemnation is maybe it's because of the way Jesus has been presented to them or the way that Jesus has been taught to them, maybe by religious leaders or something. Uh, but Jesus should not be one that should bring fear and condemnation into people's lives, but instead his name should be one that brings hope for the lost, that brings, you know, that brings a hopeful, you know, that brings true hope, you know, hope for those who are lost, those who feel like they're without hope. When they hear the name of Jesus, they should think about that that is my hope. And that is my hope to be saved. That is my hope to be found and not lost. Uh, the name of Jesus should re not remind us of judgment and condemnation, but instead it should remind us of the hope for, of hope for the condemned and for the lost. Jesus is their only hope. And, and really Jesus is, is all every, he is, he is everyone's only hope in this world today. Uh, I wrote, his name should bring hope. His name should bring the hope of forgiveness, the forgiveness that could only come from Jesus giving his life on the cross for our sins. You know, the world is, like I said, the world is already in condemnation. You know, Jesus didn't come to add shame and to add sorrow and to add guilt into people's life, but he came to set us free from the yoke of sin, from the yoke of shame, from the yoke of sorrow, guilt, and death. He came to set us free from those things, not to add those things to our lives or to anyone's life. I wrote, Jesus did not, con con did not come to condemn the world, but to save it. God sent the Lord Jesus Christ into the world to save the world from sin and from hell. Uh, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, and the world, that includes everyone in the world. Any that includes everyone. If there's someone, you know, there's no one in this world, again, like I say, that is beyond the saving power of Jesus Christ. There's no one who, who is beyond that saving power. No matter how bad he thinks he is, no matter how bad you may think he is, and how no good he is, God can still save him. You see, actually, the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. You know, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, so there's not one of us can say, I'm better than him, or I'm better than that person. Or, or, you know, he's worse than I am. No, we've all come short of the glory of God, and we all need a Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. That's the only way we can be saved, because we've all sinned. And the answer for sin is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and asking him to save us and, and you know, begin to serve him, you know, with all of our hearts, believe upon him with all of our hearts, and, you know, 
just give our whole lives to him. That's the answer. Again, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. You could say, shall not perish in hell, but have everlasting life in heaven. You know, God cares about everybody and does not want any to perish in their sins. I wrote this. It was, it was out of love and not cruelty that God sent his only begotten Son into the world world to die for our sins, um, to die for the sins of the world. And once a sinner believes that simple truth, he can immediately be saved and not condemned. Let me read that again. It was not it was not it was out of love and not cruelty that God sent his only begotten son into this world to die for the sins of the world. And once a sinner believes this simple truth, he, he is immediately saved and not condemned. So we need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. Believe how much he loved us and how much he and how he saved us. I wrote this. I wrote this and we see that desire throughout the work of Jesus. You know, when Jesus, you know, when Jesus walked the earth, you know, he continually loved the unlovely. He continued to help to restore, you know, those who were hurt, those who were broken, those who were lost. I mean, he went through great lengths to restore people back to himself. So praise the Lord. So again, remember, Jesus did not come God did not send Jesus into this world to condemn the world, but to save the world. So praise the Lord. Well, anyway, I've got one song that I'd like to sing to y'all. And uh, it's a very short song, so I think we'll sing it, um, we'll sing it three times. And anyway, it's called, I think it's called, Thank You, Lord, for Saving My Soul. Now, but my voice is kind of bad, so, but let me try it anyway. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. One more time. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Amen. Amen. So we need to thank the Lord for saving our soul. Thank the Lord uh, from saving us from sin, from saving us from the condemnation of sin. We need to always thank the Lord for his great salvation so rich and free. And how about you today? Have you been saved? Are you living under condemnation have you not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you haven't, then why not do that today? And I'm going to give you this opportunity to do that today. The Bible says again in John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have ever lasting life. And also uh, in Romans, it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so right now, why don't you believe on him today? Why don't you call upon him uh, and ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your life today? Um, and if you would like to do that, if you if you have any doubt in your heart that you're saved, if you have any doubt that you're if that you won't make it to heaven when you die, then say this prayer and mean it with all your heart. Say, "Dear God, I believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on a cross for my sins, and I believe that he rose on the third day that and that he had victory over Satan, he had victory over sin, he had uh, victory 
over all things. He had the great victory of all. And so right now, uh, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to come into my life and save my soul. Forgive me of all my sins, Lord. Uh, I give you my whole life, Lord God. Take control of my life. Help me, Lord, to live for you all the days of my life. I confess you now as the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you now for loving me, and thank you for saving me. And again, Lord, I give my whole life to you. I give my whole being to you. And again, help me to serve you for all, my, the, all the rest of my life. Help me to fulfill your will and to serve you in the great way you have, the great way and the great plan that you have for my life. Thank you for, again, thank you for saving me and loving me. And I ask this in Jesus' name. So if you said that prayer or a simple prayer like that and you meant it with all of your heart, then you just got saved. Now is what you should do is uh, find a good gospel preaching church that preaches salvation, that preaches Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And, uh, you know, start attending that church for fellowship. The Bible says that we don't need to forsake the assembling of ourselves as some do, but instead we need to have fellowship. Also, uh, get yourself a Bible and start reading the Word of God. You know, start start reading it, you know, on a regular basis so that you can grow in his righteousness, so that you can grow in his ways and, and in wisdom and understanding of his word. And also begin to pray, you know, pray and, you know, pray for others to be saved and pray for the Lord to direct your life and, and seek out God's plan for your life. Because, again, I know he has a great plan for every life. Also, uh, you know, get baptized, you know, out of obedience to Christ you know, be baptized. And remember, baptism is, is an outward sign of an inward change. It's letting everyone know that you are now saved and that you are serving the Lord. So praise the Lord. And anyway, um, always remember, always remember that no one is beyond the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus saves, and no one is beyond that saving power if they would only believe. Um, anyway, um, my name is Pastor Edmund Castro, and I hope to see you next time. I pray that everyone got, you know, got a, a blessing from this message. And I guess I'll see you later. Bye.